much to get us going this morning, yes? Let me see you. Can you do this? Can you rock this? Okay. I need some girls up here. Anybody want to come up here and dance with me? Let's do this. Come. Yeah, you right here in the headband. Let's go. Where's my girls in the house? Yeah, you right here. Screamer, screamer. Yeah, in the blue shirt with the lanyard. You, come up here. Yeah, the girl you're pointing to in the back. Run. Come on up here, friend. Okay, this talk, I don't know if you got the memo. It's on female friendship. Amen? Yes? Women hate each other. It's a problem. Let's dance about it. Yeah? Okay. Oh, yeah. Yeah, this works. I love it. Okay, do you know this song? Have you ever been to a wedding dance? Have you? Yes? Okay, here we go. Ready? Okay, good. I love this. Okay, girls' talks just aren't aren't complete without food. So I brought you a bunch of peanut butter M&Ms. How do you feel about that? Yeah? Good? I'm going to launch. I'm just going to launch. Okay, I don't know if I throw very well, but that's happening. Here, someone throw that. Oh, yeah. Hey, share that with those girls. Yeah. Good. Launch it. That was a good one. Okay, try this one. Oh, wait, wait. We should show that would have been disastrous. We are I see the ladies in the back. I see you. Get it. We are family. Yes. Get up, everybody. Okay. You guys are so beautiful. How's it going? Good? Yes? Okay. The name, where are you from? Lafayette. Is there anybody else from Lafayette? Yes. Oh, wait, wait. I heard there were people from Texas here. Where are my Texas women? Okay. And Louisiana? Yes? Any Florida girls? Florida girls? Anybody? Wannabes? Me? Okay, good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, hey, I love you all. You're beautiful. Thanks for your help. Go team. Okay, go back and hang out with the other ladies, and we're going to get this party really going here. Okay, here's the deal. Oh, stand up, stand up. Stay standing up. We're all freezing anyway, so let's just stand up, okay? Here's the deal. I want you to turn to the girl behind you, because you might not know her, and I want you to introduce yourself, because this is the fr female friendship talk. So make it happen here, friends. Nice. Good work. Favorite color, confirmation saint, hobby, hairspray. What hairspray do you use? All important questions. <laughs> I love it. Good work. Okay, bring it back to the front. Say, hey, girl, I love you. You look great. Thanks for hanging out. Okay, now you can sit and put your blanket back on, and let's do this. Yes? Okay, first of all, I have mad love for the men, but I am so excited to just be with you ladies. Yes? And I, 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 this is like probably one of my favorite talks ever because I just look out and I see just so many beautiful women. And I'm going to be really honest with you. Um, I, I come from Kansas. My name's Sarah. So I know that you guys got to meet each other. I'm like Dorothy Toto, Sarah Swafford, welcome, right? Like that's all you know, tornadoes and Sarah Swafford. That's all good stuff, right? So I know you just got to meet a couple girls. I know that you've probably met some people this weekend, but um, I always say, like, if you're going to hang out with someone for an hour, you want to, like, get to know them, right? So I can tell you everything about myself in, like, three slides, okay? You guys ready? So this is the first one. This is my husband. This is Swaff. Um, sorry, my clicker's not wanting to work. Yes, okay, there's my husband, Swaff. Um, I know. I always put this picture up, and all the girls are like, dang, Zara, he's cute. I'm like, I'm aware. I'm aware. He's a very good-looking man. So um, his name is Andy. No one calls him Andy. Everyone calls him Swaff. Um, that, my husband actually um, is a professor at Benedictine College. We live in Kansas. Yeah. Go Ravens. Um, and so the students call him Swaff or Swaff Daddy or P. Diddy Swaff. Um, Doc Swaff, anything like that, which is really fun. And um, I call him Swaff because everyone's called him Swaff since he was like five years old. So if you hear me call him Swaff, sorry, that's me, the wife, talking about my husband. Um, and he is really cute. We'll actually be married 14 years on Tuesday, which is really fun. I know, isn't that awesome? So, and he is cute, but not as cute as my kids. So you guys saw my kids, yeah. Um, in this next picture, 
Um, this is Thomas and Fulton and Kate and Colby. And then there's a little basketball there. And I just had number five. This is John Paul Swafford. This is baby John Paul. I know. I was like, babies and girls? Yes, let's do this. Is he not the cutest? He's edible. You can, like, pop him in, in your mouth. He's just so cute. So so this is my family. And I always love this picture because everyone looks at this picture, minus John Paul. He, was, <laughs> he wasn't here yet. Um, this picture, it, everyone loves it, and they're like, oh, Sarah, you're perfect family. And I'm like, <laughs> lies, all lies. So you guys see my baby up in the corner? See his Colby up there? That's a rock on his head, a rock. A boulder, actually, right? Any of the moms out there are like, family pictures, like, shoot me, right? Like, it was so cold this day. Everyone was hating their lives, you know? And as a mom, you're like, look, like, I'll give you pizza. I'll give you ice cream. I'll give you a $20 bill. I just need you to take this picture right now, right? Like, pull it together, friends. You want a pony? I'll get you a pony. But pull it together, right? Like, so this was, like, one of those days. And I come to you in this women's session because I think it's so easy as women to look at a picture like this, right? And I, I'm going to be really honest. We compare our behind the scenes to everyone else's highlight reel. And that's why we're insecure, my friends. Like, I just showed you the Swafford, you know, family highlight reel, right? There's, like, four pictures. They're framed. I hate, I haven't taken family pictures in years. It's a pain, right? Like, I come to you saying, like, that's why we're insecure is because we are the only ones that see our behind the scenes. We don't get up in the morning and snap a picture and be like, I think I'll post this. This is good, right? Like, how easy is it to take down a picture that's bad of us, like, so fast, right? Just, like, take it down, destroy it, burn it, kill it, right? Like... And so I come to you to be real, and part of that is, you know, I, I want you to see the behind the scenes. And so I put together this little one-minute video. I call it the Swafford Family Highlight Reel of the best of the best. It's just, like, the worst pictures I could find on my phone of my family and I. So they're going to cue this video. It's pretty fantastic. So get ready. <laughs> okay, so, oh, okay, these are, oh, good. I'm glad the lights are down. These are just really bad pictures. I'm still working on my bad face, like, my faces are good. This is me no makeup at McDonald's. Um, this is a, a shot of my triple chin. Uh, this is a still shot of my triple chin. I just look constipated in this picture. I don't know what's going on. Uh, this is fantastic. Family vacation for the win. Uh, Kate for the win on this picture, right? We're just a mess. Like, my family is always a mess. Like, we, she was doing art. She's like, what? What's the problem? Christmas card worthy every morning. My shower cap is his favorite hat, right? Lots of up the nose shots on my, on my phone. And this is Colby. Hi. Um, Hello. Colby doesn't understand that you don't die every time. He, like, kills people, and then he dies because that's appropriate, right? Like, I don't know, right? Like, Ow! And he dies. <laughs> And this isn't me, but I wish it was, because it is just the most fantastic picture, right? Isn't that good? Okay, okay, we're gonna loop it, and we're gonna do it again, no, I'm just kidding. Okay, thank you, video people, you're amazing. Um, so I, I had way too much fun putting that together. It could have been about an hour long, but you guys get the picture, right? Like, you understand. And here's the deal, this talk is called Belonging Together, Authentic Female Friendship. Pray for me, right? Like, right? I told you earlier, women hate each other. It's a problem. It is. Is it hard to be friends with other women? Hi. Okay. Just so you have a little background, when I say that this is hard, I come from a place of deep experience called I was bullied. Hi. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Still going on with my talk, with my video. They, when I say that it's hard, I mean it. And what I mean by that is we have, like, in my life, we... <laughs> Video people, can you kill the, the sound? I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm making it hard back there on them because I'm playing videos and it's not easy to play all that stuff. Um, so when I was younger, uh, I, I, my dad had cancer and I lost my aunt to cancer in sixth grade. And it was a really hard time in my life. And I, well, I woke up one day in seventh grade and for some reason, it just, everybody, uh, the girls just decided that I was the one, right? And so I was bullied so bad in seventh grade, I had to switch schools. And... Back then, they, we didn't have phones. Um, we didn't, that was, I'm really old. And um, I, they would write notes about me and drop them in my book bag almost every day. And I think back to that time, and I think back to like, why did I have to go through that? Like, why did I have to walk that road of pain and suffering? Um, and I look out at you right now, and I know why. Because God wanted me to stand on a stage and fight this battle with you guys. And I'm gonna tell you right now, yes, amen. I'm going to tell you right now, you guys, I went through junior high, high school, college, got engaged, got married, had Thomas and Fulton before I even knew what social media was. 
before I even sent a text message. I'm, I'm 36, not 86, right? Okay, like I missed it by like a year, right? I missed it by a year. And I come before you and I stand before you and I say, I am so proud of you for the fight that you're putting up with this. I do not know what my life would have, how it would have turned out if I would have had a phone in junior high and high school. And I am proud of you. And it's hecka hard. And I stand here and I fight with you and I'm fighting for you because I know how hard this is. This battle of being a woman in the 21st century is no joke. And the fact that women make it harder on each other has to stop, amen? And I come before you in this talk to say, this is going to be hard, but we're going to attack it in three ways, okay? So these are the three things I want to focus on in this talk, if you guys are up for it, if you guys are game. Our relationship with other women, our relationship with the men, and our relationship with our Lord. Yes? All, of, all three of those play a huge part in this. And we know that relationships with women can be hard. And the question is why, right? Every single one of you in this room wants to be seen, known, and loved. And the question that you ask and the question that I asked was, am I ever going to be enough? And am I ever going to be truly loved? Am I ever going to be enough? And am I ever going to be truly loved? It dictated everything that I did in high school. And those questions would go around in my, in my mind. And what it led to is two things that I think I just really want to, like, dive into and be real about. And those two things are competition and insecurity. I even have a slide that says it because I just want to, like, call it out by name. Competition and insecurity. We compete with each other, right? We compare ourselves to each other. I only had to compare myself to the people in my school. You get to compare yourself to the whole flippin' world. You're welcome right? Thank you, Instagram. Love you, right? You get to compare yourself to the whole world. And I just, again, like, I know how hard that is because we compare and we compete. And I have to be really honest with you. I have a mad love for one JoJo Gaines. Any Joanna Gaines fans in the, in the, in the house? It's that fixer-upper lady, long, dark hair, super cute. Target, yeah? Okay, everyone's together? Okay. So here's the deal. I love me some JoJo Gaines. And I, I like everything she does. I'm like, gold, the woman's gold, right? And I actually had to, I'm, I, had to stop, I, I had to stop following her on Instagram. And here's why. Every time I would go to her stuff or I would see her posts or I would go through and look at, at stuff, I would put my phone down and I would look around my house and I would be like, I think I just need to burn it down and start over. <laughs> right? I would just look around my house and be like, what was I thinking there? I mean, home goods, 30 bucks. Like, what a waste. She said it was a terrible idea, right? Like, I mean, I would just look around. And it got to the point where I was like, dang, like, I don't know. Like, I think I need to, like, back away from this for a minute. Because what I discovered is I would look around my house, and I would feel ungrateful for what I had. And it hit me like a ton of bricks. And I thought to myself, if, if me, Sarah, 36-year-old, mother of five, happily married, Kansas. If I'm looking around my house feeling this way about knickknacks, how the heck are you guys looking around the world discerning if you're enough as a person as you fight this battle of am I enough and am I truly loved and I want to be seen and known and loved and what is that going to take? I can't even imagine that battle that you're fighting. And like I said, I'm here to fight with you because competition and jealousy and insecurity is real. And me, like you, scroll on your phone, you know, laying in bed, scrolling at night, and you put your phone on your nightstand, and you just feel this, sometimes you just feel this feeling of worthlessness. And you're like, where is this coming from? I'm hustling. I'm doing all the things I think I'm supposed to be doing to make it, right? And you just feel worthless. How do we fight that? How do we fight back? I have a picture of two women that I want to use um, I want to read this to you because we're, I'm going to get into, like, where we're going to go. But my husband wrote this amazing th – do you guys know these ladies? Mary and Elizabeth, do you guys know this one? Yeah? She is so – they're beautiful, right? This is just straight-up joy. As women, why can't we have this? My husband wrote a little – he wrote a book, and there's a paragraph in that book that I, I totally stole from, and I want to read it to you. Guys, it's the, yeah, right here. Okay, take this in, ladies. Envy is a particularly poisonous vice. It is sorrow at the good of another. It's the attitude that says, if I can't have it, 
I don't want anyone to have it. Envy can't stand the fact that someone is succeeding, and it plays a zero-sum game. If you're up, I'm down. And the only way for me to be up is for you to be down. Envy leads to intense competition among friends and members of a community. No one is happy for one another because envy is just the opposite. It's sorrow at the good of another. It leads to insecurity and gossip. And for obvious reasons, it is toxic to friendships and destructive to community. Ooh, baby. Is that not a true slide? Welcome to junior high. Ooh, right? Like, everybody, just aren't we just praise Jesus we're done with junior high? Praise you, Lord, right? Like, never again. Be nice to junior high girls. They're, everyone knows that they're having a rough, a rough go, right? Jealousy, it's, jealousy says, I want what she has. Envy says, I want what she has, and I don't want her to have it. Envy is one of the deadly sins because it'll cut your heart. It will poison your soul. And I watch it wreak havoc in women of every age. Amen? I watch it wreak havoc all over our world. Look at all the celebrities that you guys look up to, like the celebrities that scroll around, right? Like, this is a struggle for all women. Envy. How do we fight back? Why, like, how can we have that joy that we just saw on that screen? That picture, we can pull it up again, of Mary and Elizabeth. Look at this picture of just straight up joy, right? You guys saw it. And I want to read from scripture about this relationship that they had. Mary just found out that she's going to become the mother of our Lord. Big news, right? Big deal, right? Listen to the scripture. Can you guys put up the slide with the verse on it for me? In those days, Mary arose and went with haste into the hill country to a city of, Ju of Judah, and she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. And when Elizabeth heard the greeting of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit, and she exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why is this granted me to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For behold, when the voice of your greeting came to my ears, the babe in my womb leapt with joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her from the Lord. I want you to see a couple key words in here. One, she went with haste. Two, she, Elizabeth looks at Mary and goes, blessed are you among, among women, and blessed is she, blessed are you, Mary, who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken from the Lord. Affirmation, 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 affirmation. Girl, you got this, right? What do you hear Elizabeth saying? First, you saw Mary go with haste. Why are we so scared to go to each other in good and bad times, right? Mary went with haste. She's like, I got a big thing going on. I'm going to go. I'm going, right? And she goes to Elizabeth, and Elizabeth's open arms is like, wow. Mother of God, that's intense. We should, we should chat. Peanut butter M&Ms are a thing right now, right? Like, wow, this is a good thing. Like, blessed are you among women. Like, whoa, you chose me because I'm your sister in Christ, and I am so happy for you to be here. But like, whoa, homegirl, that's heavy stuff, right? Like, and then she praises her and says, blessed are you, Mary, because you showed up. You said yes. Get it, girl, right? Like, I'm, I, I would like to think this is how Mary and Elizabeth spoke to each other. Yes. Um, I'm kidding, but I'm not. What Envy and jealousy, you guys, how do we kill it? We share affirmation and we share joy. Share your joy with people. Share your affirmation with people. What's harder, to give a compliment or to take it? Really? What do you guys think? To take, to give? Depends on maybe who you are, right? Some women have a really hard time giving compliments. Some women have a really hard time taking compliments. Maybe we should get better at both, yes? How do you get better at anything? Practice, yeah? When you see a girl that has everything that you want and you want to rip her eyes out, right? Like I, always, I, I, I live uh, across the street from 2,000 college students, right? And so like guys and girls will walk around campus holding hands and then you, you see like four girls behind them who are like, I'm going to rip their arms off. I want to rip their arms off, right? Like, am I being real or being real, right? Like, you see what you want, and you're like, oh, so happy for you. 
truly. I'm going to go eat more Oreos. Bye. Right? Like, you see what you want, and you're like, I want that. Then you have a choice, right? Are you going to be happy for her? P.S. She's probably having a really tough day, and her life is a train wreck as well, so just pray for her, right? Everybody is fighting a hard battle, so be kind. Amen? It might not be your battle. You'll never understand other people's battles. But when you look around this room, it's real, you guys. Every single person in this room is fighting a hard battle. So we can choose to be envious or jealous. We can choose to tear them down. We can gossip. We can backbite. We can comment nasty. We can write notes and put them in their book bag. Or we can step back and say, I don't know what's going on in your life, but I want to share in your joy because I'm your sister in Christ and I'm happy for you. And I want to affirm you because I know that I need it and I'm going to give it. Because when I affirm and share in joy, I receive as well, yes? That's how we kill competition. Step two, our relationship with the men. Come Holy Spirit, yes? Okay, I have a slide. Um, This is going to be deep and this is going to be hard because this is real. But what I want to talk about is what I call the cycle of use. Women use men to get what they want. Men use women to get what they want. Fill in the blanks. Sometimes it looks like this. Men will emotionally manipulate, get women where they're most vulnerable, right, to get what they want, which is sex. And women will take their sex appeal, their bodies, what they know they have to offer, what they know they can throw out there to get what they want, which is to feel loved or to feel wanted or to be totally honest, to feel anything at all because they're so tired of feeling empty and alone. And men use women emotionally and physically. And women use men emotionally and physically. And it's this cycle that just spins. But we don't talk about it. Because as human beings, we're not wired to use people. Girls don't say things like, yeah, I'm just going to use them for six months because I'm just kind of tired of being alone. Guys don't say, like, yeah, I used her for the, the other night for like 20 minutes. It was fine. Like, we don't even talk like that because we're not wired to use each other, yet we use each other all the time. Close your eyes for a minute, just for a minute. I want you to close your eyes, and I want you to think about a time in your life where you were used, either emotionally or physically or maybe even both, and you knew it. Or maybe think about a time in your life where you used someone else, either emotionally or physically or maybe even both, and you knew it? Or maybe it was a time in your life where you watched your best friend, your sibling, someone you love, be used, either emotionally or physically, or maybe even both, and you knew it? Or maybe it was a time where you watched someone you love use someone else, and you didn't know what to do or how to help. Okay, you can open your eyes. Everybody take a deep breath in. Let it out, right? Those are four of the heaviest questions that I could ask you or that you could ask me because there's not a single woman in this room that hasn't felt the effects of the cycle of use in some way. It is real. And I want to teach you two sentences that are going to change the way that you have to go through this life. Because I want you to hear me say, from the bottom of my heart, ladies, that I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the times that you haven't been loved by the men in your life the way that you deserve to be loved. Starting with your own father and the father wounds that we carry. Maybe you were hurt by a boyfriend or an ex, by a group of men hear from my heart that I'm sorry that that happened to you. And I feel for you and I feel with you. And you deserve better and you deserve to be loved. And the cycle of use has to be called out because I don't want you to be hurt ever again like that. And I'm going to teach you these two sentences and I want you to repeat them after me. I will not use you. And I will not let you use me. One more time. I will not use you. 
and I will not let you use me. They are two of the strongest sentences that will ever come out of your mouth. You may need them today. You may need them in five days. You may need them in five weeks, five months, five years, but you are going to need them. And I want you to put them on little fortune cookie pieces of paper, and I want you to put them in your back pocket, and I want you to pull them out, and I want you to use them whenever you need to, yes? Because the cycle of use is real, but so is the power to stand up and say no. I had a guy come up to me a couple years ago. Like, I was on campus strolling the kid, the kids. I was on a walk, and there was this, like, six-foot-five, like, big old football player. And he comes up to me, and he's like, Mrs. Swafford, can I talk to you? And I was like, yeah. So we're just, like, strolling along, and we're chatting. And then all of a sudden, he, like, turns to me. And he's like, I got to tell you something. And I was like, okay. And he looked at me, and he goes, I was at your talk a couple weeks ago. He's like, in the very next weekend, I found myself alone in a room with a girl, and I was about to make a really poor life choice. But I looked her in the eye. And your stupid voice came in my head. And I was like, I can't use you, and I can't let you use me. And I, I, I left. I, like, walked out of the room, and I walked down the stairs, and I walked across the quad, and I went back to my room. But before I, I entered my room, I just stopped. And I thought to myself, I think for the first time in my life, I know what it means to be a man. And I was like, oh, my gosh. Yes, right? Like, Yes. I looked at this guy and I said, oh, you the man. I was like, you the man, right? And I told this guy, I said, you gave that girl that night a gift that only you could give her. You handed her her dignity and her confidence and her self-worth. And I could stand on a stage for two weeks and tell her that she's beautiful and that she's loved and that she's enough and she's not just body parts to be used. I could go on for days and not be able to do what you were able to do in two seconds. You're the man. You win. And he cried and I cried and I will never forget the look on his face because the light bulb went off, the cycle of use was called out, and his life was changed. Amen? Repeat after me. I will not use you and I will not let you use me. Do we struggle with control as women? Do you have a plan for your life? Okay, so I'm an oldest child, only girl, perfectionistic people pleaser. There will be therapy later, right? I had a plan for my life in high school. And I would like, I knew it, and I would have like it in my hand, and I would have it close to my chest, and if people would come by and try to look at it or change it, I would just bark at them and growl, right? I'd be like, back off, right? As women, do we know what we think is gonna make us happy? Yes. I wanna talk about our relationship with the Lord. I come to you, again, I, I get like 40 minutes to give you this talk. You guys, I'm gonna be really honest with you. If I could go to coffee with you, if I could go to dinner with you, if we could sit on the cement floor and eat peanut butter M&Ms for a couple hours, I would sit and I would listen to your heart, everything that's going on. And I would probably just want you to hear this. If I could have like a minute with you, this is what I would want you to know. I wrote a book called Emotional Virtue. And there is a paragraph in here where I spend 60 pages on how to go to from hey to I do because relationships are dramatic. It's how to live a drama-free life, you right? But if I could just have like a few minutes with you, this is what I would want you to hear. Because I know that you have a plan for your life. I know that you are so anxious and worried that you're going to screw it up. And I know you're so anxious and so worried that it's not going to happen the way that you want it to happen. And you live in fear. I know that fear. I lived it for a long time. And I know that you have these things like, I'll be happy ifs, right? Like, I'll be happy when this happens and this happens and I get this job and I am with this guy and I lose 10 pounds and you know what I mean? Like this is like I'll be happy when, I'll be happy if. And it's a rat race full of insecurity and full of anxiety and full of fear. And if I could sit with you, I would hand this book to you and I would look you in the eye, I'd take my coffee cup and I'd put it to the side and I would lean over and I would grab your hands and I would look you in the eye and I would say this to you because this is the only thing I want you to hear in this whole talk. Jesus desires to love you like no human being can. He has given man and woman to each other to be a sign of his love. But that love doesn't replace our need for his love. In the same way, no man can be your savior. And trying to make someone your savior can actually ruin that relationship. It's not possible. No one is capable of being your everything or being your God. It's too heavy. Your significant other will break under the weight and pressure, and they will inevitably fall short, and you will be disappointed. It can be easy to seek to fulfill all of our desires with anything but God. Every decision you made in the past, whether it turned out well 
or in the end was a complete disaster was because you made that decision believing that it would truly make you happy and fulfill a desire that you long for. When you made that decision, it may have seemed like the right thing to do at the time, as if it would ultimately fulfill you. But whether those decisions led to the pain of an unbearable breakup, being rejected, overlooked, abused, used, or facing the reality that you've used or hurt someone else, deep down, those choices were ultimately a search for God, though you may not have realized it at the time. We all desire infinite happiness, a desire that drives all of our decisions, and this desire can only be found in God himself. I come to you with one mission in my life. I get emotional about it because it means so much to me. My goal in life, whether it's with my husband, my friends, my kids, my family, and all of you who are now my sisters in Christ, I have one goal, and that is to clear everything out of the way so that you can sit in the sacred heart of Jesus. I want you to clear everything out of the way through the power of the confessional, to lay everything down at his feet, to drop everything off in that box, just make it, lay it in there, so that you can sit in the gaze of our Heavenly Father, and so he can convict you of your true identity and worth as a beloved daughter of God. Because you will never find your worth in the face of a human being. You will never find your worth. You can look your whole life. If I could convict you in your dignity and worth, you know I would. But I can't. Only he can. And he wants to give that to you this weekend. He wants you to sit in the gaze. Ladies, I dodged the gaze, the gaze for years because I didn't feel like I was enough for him. I wasted so much time dodging the gaze because I felt like I wasn't ready or perfect enough for him to love me. And that is the greatest lie, amen? That is right where the devil wanted me for years. And when I finally sat in that gaze and I finally let him love me and convict me in my true identity and worth as a beloved daughter of God, my whole life changed. And that's why I stand before you because I want that for you so desperately. But we have to clear everything else out of the way, right? We have to remove everything that stands in the way of that so that we can sit there and we can return to it over and over and over again. I put, we, we're, as women, we forget who we are so easily, right? We belong to the Father. That's what this whole weekend is about. We belong to the Father. We belong to the church. We belong to a family. We belong to one another. I want you to sit in that. And I want you to look at these slides. I call it the gospel in four slides. <laughs> um, slide people, do you mind doing this? Yeah. You are a beloved daughter, so loved that God the Father created you out of love, completely unique and unrepeatable. You are a beloved daughter, so loved that God the Father gave his only begotten son to suffer and die on a cross to save you from sin and death. You are a beloved daughter, so loved that God the Father raised Christ from the dead so that you might have eternal life with him forever. And you are a beloved daughter, so loved that God the Father promised never to abandon you and proved it by sending the Holy Spirit to always be with you, for you are never alone. Feel that slide, ladies, you are never alone. And this next slide is one of my favorite quotes of all time. We are not the sum of our weaknesses and failures. We are the sum of the Father's love for us. I want you to let that sit in your heart for a minute. When you look in the mirror, you see every imperfection. You see everything you're not. You see everything you want to change. You see everything that you wish you were so you could be more like her, whoever her is. And yet, I look at you, and he looks at you and sees the sum of his love. Who do you let be the boss of your thoughts? Ladies, I have struggled with anxiety my whole life. I carry a ton of wounds. And I struggle with anxiety, and I have to be what I call the boss of my thoughts, yes? When you hear things like, you're ugly, you're fat, you're worthless, you're stupid, you'll never be enough. Whose voice is that? Because I sure as heck don't think it's the voice of our Heavenly Father, amen? When I hear things in my head, I've always have, I don't know if you guys struggle with this, but I struggle with, um, am I enough or am I too much? Yes? I'm kind of a big personality. You know what I mean? Like, I just, I feel like I'm too much or I'm not enough. I can never quite figure it out. That is not the voice of the Lord. And so what I do is I take that thought and I hold it ransom. Whatever that thought is, ladies, you are now the boss of your thoughts. You hold that thought ransom. You hold that attack ransom. You look at it. 
You look at it in the palm of your hands. You place it before God the Father and you say, is this from you? And if it doesn't sound like him, it's not from him, yes? And you take it and you throw it against the wall and you say, back up, Satan. Yes? Back the heck up. Yes? I get a little feisty with this. Can you guys tell? Obviously. They're like, gosh, I'm scared. You're, scared. You're scaring me, right? Like, no, like things will happen in my life and I'll just be like, back up. That's like, back up, right? And then when it gets really bad, I go to people in my life, my inner circle. I go to my husband or whatever, and I look them in the eye and I say, speak truth to my heart. Remind me of who I am. Because sometimes we need to be re reminded of who we are, yes? This talk is on what? Authentic female friendship, yes? I have a slide for you, this next quote. I want you guys, it's okay to be both a masterpiece and a work in progress at the same time. I don't currently have a tattoo, but I might just tattoo this on my arm, yes? It is okay to be a work in progress and a masterpiece at the same time. One of my favorite quotes is from Dr. Scott Hahn. God love him. Blessed Saint, yeah, blessed Scott Hahn. If you don't know him, get to know him. He said, God loves you just the way you are, but too much to leave you there. Right? God loves you just the way you are, but too much to leave you there. I love it. I actually came up with this. This is, um, this, could you guys put up the surrender and strive? So I've got some homegirls. They're called my minions. I got some girls and guys that I have around Benedictine, and we get together. And I say surrender and strive all the time. Hashtag surrender, hashtag strive. Yes? Because what happens is, is surrender, everything I just talked about, the gaze, sitting in the gaze of our Lord and surrendering our whole life, taking your plans and saying, Lord, blow my mind, because I know you can. When you take that competition and you take that insecurity and you surrender it to the Lord and you say, I'm enough because you love me. And I'm enough even when I don't think I am. And I hold these thoughts and these lies ransom and I throw them against the flipping wall because I'm enough because you love me. I want you to start training yourself to say, like, not only to believe it and be convicted in it, to listen to him say it, but to really like get it in your head, yes? Do you guys know what I mean? Like I want you to be the boss of your thoughts. I want you to train your mind. And this is how I do it, through surrender and strive. You surrender your life, Lord. I give you everything. I trust you. And you strive for virtue, for goodness, for happiness. Virtue, right? Patience, kindness, gentleness, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You guys know what I mean? Like all those things that are so hard for us as women. Truly, yes? So hard. I'm going to be really, really honest with you guys. This is probably one of the most important things that you're going to hear from this talk. I need you as women to get together and have your Strive Tribe. I want you to get a hashtag and a t-shirt. I don't care, but I need you to get together with some women, and I need you to come together as sisters in Christ. Yes? Notice I did not say click. Hate them. Stomp them out, right? Like, I hate clicks. Notice I said Strive Tribe. Invite women in. Power, you guys, the power of the invite. Amen. How many of you have been invited to something that changed your life, right? I invite you to this weekend. It's going to change your life. Good. Okay, so here's the deal. I want you to find some women that you can run with, your strive tribe. Is it hard to be a woman? It's not just me in Kansas. Good. We're all together. Yes? Okay, good. I want you to take what I call the Sarah Swafford pledge, okay? All the ladies in the house, raise your right hand right now. We're going to make this, this is going down. I promise you, Sarah. From this day forward, I will not make life harder on another woman. Amen. Now look at the women around you and say, I mean it, I mean it, I mean it, I mean it, I mean it. I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you, I love you. Your hair looks amazing. Beautiful. All right, you guys ready for this? I want to read something. I want, it to, I want it to come into your heart. One of my best friends is a priest named Father John Burns. He is from Wisconsin, and he is like a brother to me. He's actually uh, John Paul's godfather. And he wrote this book called Lift Up Your Heart. And I'm going to be really honest with you. It changed my life. It changed the way I pray. And there is a paragraph in here that I want to read to you because it's something that I want to wash over you in this moment. And I want you to take it and I want you to bury it somewhere really deep in your heart. So close your eyes and just listen to his words fall over you and wash over you. Imagine God as a sculptor, each person a unique, unfinished work of art. 
If we admit this image, inevitably questions arise about what it would take to complete and beautify the work. We can see how easily we impose our own ideas on the process of completion. Frequently, we set about in a frantic haste to embellish, to hasten toward finality, to add our own finishing touches and to see ourselves and to adorn ourselves as we see best. We want to be attractive to behold. We want to stand out from the crowd, to attract interest and the notice of others. We convince ourselves that this will somehow make us happy. We seek jewels and adornments, but we seek them not for the sake of beauty. We want to have and to have more, to let others know we have more, so that rather than our wishing we had better lives, they can look at us and wish their lives were better. When we slip into this mode, we miss the fundamentals. Of much greater importance is it to see the foundation, the sculpture itself, and to see it, ladies, to see it as unfinished. In prayer, we must work to recognize that a loving master sculptor has crafted each human person uniquely. By his design, no two works of this sculptor are ever the same. Rather than chasing after embellishments, a better starting point lies in two related questions. How can I best adorn the face of creation? And how can I best reflect the genius of the sculptor and thereby shine the splendor of God into the hearts of all those who come into my life? Perhaps not the first questions that come to mind, but they bring us into harmony with the mind of the Almighty. I want you to open your eyes. I want you to take a deep breath in. Let it out. God is sculpting you. He created you. There's no one else like you. Not a single one of you are the same, and praise God for that. One of my dearest friends is Sister Miriam James. She always says when she looks out at a crowd of women, she sees wildflowers. And the beauty of it is because not a single one is the same. I want you to sit with that. Because when we're talking about female friendship, ultimately envy and competition are always going to come up. And I want you to kill it in your life with affirmation and kill it with joy. You, in that gaze, loving on the women in your life. Loving on the men in your life. The men are fighting a battle that we will never understand. But we love them and we respect them and they are our brothers in Christ. And I pray that you take everything that came up in your heart right now and in this talk and you bring it to the Lord because this weekend is going to be a weekend of healing amen this weekend is going to be a weekend of bringing things into the light my life was changed in the confessional that is where my conversion began was dropping everything off in that confessional and being able to sit in that gaze there's a rally cry that I want to teach you my girls and I have a rally rally cry. It's, it's called Quo Vadis. We have a slide up here. And this, this Quo Vadis is something that has really galvanized my heart personally in the last year. We were in Rome um, on a pilgrimage, and we went to this church called the Church of Quo Vadis. And this priest got super excited that was with us. And he's like, this is the Church of Quo Vadis. And we we're like, yeah, we don't know what that means, right? And he was like, no, no, get ready. And I was like, okay. This church is built over the site where St. Peter had a major conversion moment in his life. Just so you guys know, you don't just have one conversion. You just keep converting and drawing closer to the Lord over and over and over again, okay? And this was one for St. Peter. All the apostles were sent out, right, to the ends of the earth. He was sent to Rome. You guys, Rome was a train wreck, right? It was a hot mess. And he was being persecuted. His friends were being fed to the lions in the Colosseum. He was just getting totally beat up and smacked around. And he was like, you know what? I'm out. Peace. I'm done. Have you guys ever felt that way? Peace, right? Little Debbie's to my bed, right? Sweats. Hi, I'm done. Yeah, thank you. Dark room. Thank you. Check, right? Like Netflix. Check. Okay. You felt that, right? Where you're just like, I am done. I am done. I am done. I am done. I'm out. That was St. Peter. He put on his, you know, he put on his backpack and he was walking out of Rome. He's like, sorry, can't do it. And as he's walking out of Rome, he looks up on a, on a dirt road like this. He looks up and he sees the risen Christ walking towards him. And he looked at our Lord. He looked at Jesus and he said, Quovadis, 
which means where are you going? And Jesus, in Latin, it means where are you going? And Jesus looked back at St. Peter, and he said, I'm going back to Rome to be crucified again, and walked past him. And that was St. Peter's moment, where the question was turned on him. And Peter had to ask himself, Peter, quo vadis, where are you going? And he turned around and he walked back to Rome and he fought the good fight and he built up the church and he died to himself and he loved people well, even when it was hard. And he went to his death because he knew that he didn't wanna go anywhere than where the Lord wanted him to go. And I come before you and I stand before you ladies and I ask you a very important question and that question is quo vadis, where are you going? It's not what do I do in this situation or how do I want to play this or what do I need to be right now? The question is who do I want to be and where am I going? That'll answer everything for you. When things get hard and the world gets loud in my life and in the life of the women in my life that I am around, we look at each other and we say, quo vadis. Look at me, quo vadis. And it just completely recenters us, yes? It brings me back. Where am I going and who do I want to be? I need you to say that to each other. I need you to be there for each other in your youth group, in your schools, in your groups. I, I mean, anywhere you are, I need you to build that Strive Tribe and I need you to say to each other, Quovadis. And I need you to sit with each other during this weekend when all of this is going to come up because you've been hurt. I'm wounded. You're wounded. And you need to share that with someone. I need you to bring it to the Lord and I need you to bring it to your trusted friends because I want you whole and I want you to heal and I want you to be able to remind each other of who you are. You're the beloved daughter of God and you're going to him every day. I want you guys to close your eyes and I want you to open your hands just like in receptivity to the Lord as we pray and as we sing. I want you to bring everything before the Lord. I know that I just threw a lot at you but the Lord wanted to open up a place inside of you maybe that's never been touched before. Something that's hard and something that hurts and something that's hidden because we're not very good at bringing it to the light and I want you to open your hands and I want you to let him love you. Close your eyes, this is all about you. If you wanna open your hands up on your lap just as a sign of like, Lord, I'm here. Pray this with me, sing with us. Lift your heart to him right now.
just want you to kind of take it in. Life is busy and the world is loud and it's hard to find times like this. But this is what I mean by sitting in the gaze. And I know it's not always comfortable and it's not always easy. But that's us making it hard on ourselves because it's very simple, ladies. He created you, he knows you, he loves you, he delights in you. My friend, Father John, who I was read from his book, he was with me a couple months ago when we were at the SEEK conference and we spoke, I spoke to 10,000 college women. And at the end, I asked him to come up and pray over us. And he prayed a prayer that was straight fire from the Holy Spirit. And I wanna pray it over you right now. So I want you to put your hand on the shoulder of the girl next to you because we are sisters in Christ and I believe in the power of the Holy Spirit and I believe he has the power to heal. And every woman in this room needs healing today. Put your hand on the shoulder neck of the girl next to you and then I want you to open your other hand because this prayer is for you and this prayer is for her and this prayer is for all of us. But I want you to let Father Johnny's words come down upon you. I want you to hear him as a priest and a father and a brother and a man pray over you. These are his words from the Father to you in this moment. Consider for just a moment the gaze of the Father over all of creation. As the Father gazes on all of creation, know that he sees you, that you stand out to the Lord. As he looks upon you, he looks upon you with delight. He sees in your heart something that has never been made before and something that he will never make again. Let the gaze of the Father wash over you for just a moment. As you rest in God's gaze, open your heart to acknowledge that this heart that has never been made before and will never be made again, unrepeatable, irreplaceable, this heart that is yours is in pain and is not perfect. Acknowledge before the Lord for just a moment that you have asked questions about your worth, about your value, about your goodness, and about your beauty. Acknowledge that as you have had these questions on your heart many times, you have looked around for answers. Acknowledge in a particular way as you wonder if you're worthy, if you are lovable, if you are enough, if you are beautiful. With those questions, you have looked into the eyes of others, and particularly, you've looked into the eyes of men, hoping to find an answer. You've found pain. You've been hurt, betrayed, and broken. In this prayer, come back to the foundation. Know the Father in this moment very gently takes your chin and lifts it back into his gaze. As the Father looks into your eyes and holds your face, he sees the deep places where there is pain, where there's questions that still linger, where the broken answers you saw in the world caused such agony in your heart. And the Father says to you, I never wanted that for you. And I want to take that from you now. Receiving the gaze of the Father, now you hear his word to you, which is absolute truth. Hear the Lord say to you, my beautiful one, my beloved daughter, you are beautiful to me. I love the way that I made you. Hear the Lord say to you in truth that he's never made anything like this before. He's so proud of your heart and he will never make another heart like this. Hear him say to you in all of those questions, yes, yes, my dear beloved one, you are beautiful to me. You are lovely to me. You are delightful. I long for your heart please come back to me. The Lord says this to you in this moment. Give the Lord permission right now to draw you back to himself. 
give him permission in this moment to speak the deep truth that you are beautiful, you are lovely, you are delightful, you are worthy, you are enough, you are beloved. Hear these words from the Lord because they are his. He uses my mouth as his priest to speak deep truth and in this truth to reclaim you, to cast out all the darkness and to reestablish you in the fullness of life and light and love. Open your heart, dear sisters, and hear the truth of the Father in this moment as he says to you, I love you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, Father John Burns. We come to you, Lord, in this moment as the Holy Spirit falls fresh upon this room. Lord God, I ask you to bring healing and wholeness upon this room. I pray that you give these women the strength to bring everything to you in the confessional, to bring everything to each other, to be able to not sit in fear for they are not alone, that they will hear every word that has been spoken out of love and put it deep into their heart to return to over and over and over again, Lord God. I pray in a very special way that this weekend brings conviction into the heart of these women that they are the beloved daughters and that you delight in them. We give you our lives. We give you everything that we are. We know we belong to you. When we know where we're going, going to the gaze. We're going to run together towards heaven, towards you, towards the life and the joy and the peace that only you can give, that the world cannot give. And so we open our hands and we pray and we sing and we give you everything. Lord Jesus, come into this room and heal hearts.
this is real. This is real love. What you feel right now in this moment is real. Don't grasp at things that aren't, amen? I want you to know that I am fighting for you and that I love you something fierce. And if I could sit and go to coffee with you, I would. And that's why I wrote my book is because I want you to have someone in your ear at all times who's helping you be the boss of your thoughts. I want your strive tribe strong. I want you guys united in love and affirmation and joy and to stomp out, stomp out everything else, yes? We as women carry a very unique gift to the world and that confidence and beauty in the Lord is a force to be reckoned with. Yes, my friends? And I see that in you. I see it in your heart. And I want you whole because I want him to shine through you and into the world. And I need you. The Lord needs you. I need you. The men in that room or wherever they are, they need you. Come together, yes? My girls, my minions, and my guys, we got together. We made shirts. We made prints. We made stickers. We made all of it because I freaking don't want you to forget what you just heard. Yes? I want you to be in your strive tribes, and I want you to build each other up. And so I come to you right now, and I want you right now to hug somebody because that's important. So everybody hug somebody because it's a girl's talk. So let's all hug it out. Hug it out, hug it out, hug it out. Make it happen. I also want to thank Kayla for playing so beautifully. God love her. I can't sing or dance. I also want you to know that I'm really excited to meet you, and I want to hug you and tell you how amazing you are. So I will be at the meet and greet at 4.30 over at my booth with all the fun stuff. I would love to love on you and tell you how amazing you are and to tell you how great your hair is because it is. Let's pray a Hail Mary and end this out. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, to Our Lady, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. St. Joseph, in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. I love you girls. Quo vadis, yes?